Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the very first episode of Meet Mercedes Digital. This is a completely new communications format from Mercedes-Benz, and its purpose is to share product and business news with you, the media. Now, the current global health situation doesn't need much explaining. It's clear that gathering for media events is currently not an option and won't be for quite a while to come. But the news and updates from the brand with the star have not stopped, and the communications team at Daimler feel that it's important to share them with you. And that's exactly why we will be coming to you on a regular basis and digitally, of course, from Daimler Studios, facilities, and test tracks in Stuttgart starting right now. And today we will be looking directly into the future. In addition to the restarting of vehicle production, the focus is on the ambitious future goals of Mercedes-Benz. And to tell us all about these topics, we now have Mercedes-Benz CEO Ola Kalenius. Welcome, Ola. Good morning. Good morning, Jasmine. Great to be here. Great to have you as well. And Ola, we meet in very unusual times. Tell us, what is going on at Daimler currently? What's the situation like? Yeah, indeed. I think uh, some months ago, nobody could have foreseen what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is a big challenge indeed. Uh, but step by step, I feel that we're getting back on track. Most of our showrooms around the world are now open and uh, customers are starting to come back in. Uh, especially in China, it's one of those uh, bright spots in this case, uh, where mm -hmm. in the last month or so, we're almost back to normal in terms of show showroom traffic. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking at that with some cautious optimism. And also on the production side, uh, after we had uh, an interruption of our production in our mm -hmm. plants around the world in different waves, now we're gradually stepping up uh, production right. as well. And uh, as far as the office is concerned, most people are still in home office, of uh, but even there in critical functions in engineering to get the product projects going, of course, uh, people are coming back in, uh, but with the priority of protecting people, uh, using masks and making sure that you have processes where you minimize the risk of this uh, COVID-19 situation. So things are slowly returning back to normal, some positive developments right there, I can see. And this year, 2020, when we look forward, what can we expect from the rest of this very unusual year, Ola? This is a very big year for us. And even though we are fighting the COVID-19 challenge, mm -hmm. uh, we're not uh, taking the eye off the ball on what's going on strategically. And mm -hmm. of course, this year is a special year for us. It's the year where we launch our flagship car, the S-Class. And uh, that only comes around every so often. And for the whole organization, it's a special moment. And mm -hmm. uh, that's happening in the second half of the year. And we're quite excited about it. So the S-Class, one of the main highlights, of course, in a very special year. Can you tell us a little bit more about the S-Class at this point? Well, it's going to be a, a technological tour de force. Uh, it's right. really where we put uh, our brightest minds uh, and most creative people into inventing what the technologies of the future are really going to be. Uh, I had a chance only a few days ago to drive one of the pre-production vehicles, and it's going to be amazing. Uh, we took it around, uh, you know, uh, smaller roads, bigger roads. I even was on the uh, legendary German Autobahn and uh, went for a little bit of high speed. And that <laughs> serene uh, ride and drive that you expect from a Mercedes, very quiet. I was mm -hmm. uh, super impressed by that, uh, even though the predecessor set the bar high, this right. new S-Class is going to be something special. Lucky you, and we all cannot wait to take it for a test spin ourselves. Now, Ola, if we take a step back and return to our current situation, is it too early to ask, or are there already important conclusions you were able to draw from this COVID-19 situation we're in? I think it's a tad too early to mm -hmm. make some final assessment uh, of what the aftermath or, or the lessons learned of COVID-19 will be. Mm -hmm. But I see uh, three things uh, that has emerged in this crisis uh, that I think are important. And the first one is the power of coming together mm -hmm. and solidarity. It became very quickly evident uh, that we need to change our behavior. Uh, we need mm -hmm. to go for social distancing. We need to protect our people in the plants, in the office, in, in our dealerships. So, so quickly, uh, we changed the way we did business mm -hmm. to keep it up and protecting ourselves uh, and everybody else alongside with it. Also, society came together where business meets uh, society. We donated masks. One of my favorite stories is our Formula One team that can't race at the moment. Of course. They said, what can we do? And they re-engineered a, a ventilator inside four days. 
mm. and went into production the week after and has built more than 10,000 of those to support uh, hospitals in the UK. Wow. So these are just examples of solidarity when people come together. So definitely a very positive thing that you can take out of this unusual or troubled situation. Solidarity is something to be very grateful in times like these. What else is there? You mentioned three conclusions. Well, the second point, uh, and I think this is what uh, the founding fathers of this company gave us, Gottlieb Daimler and Carl Benz, mm -hmm. individual mobility. Right. We have now been reminded how, how important this, the car, your own protected zone, your own safe zone can be that gives you freedom. Uh, and that uh, individual mobility is a very valuable thing that we need to protect, but we need to take it into, into the future with new technologies. And personal vehicles, as you've mentioned, definitely one of the most or the safest means of transportation during these times. So what is your third conclusion, Ola? The third conclusion is stick to the strategy, stick to the plan. We're in the transformation of the auto industry right now, and it's two mega trends that are driving this transformation. Mm -hmm. It's decarbonization. We are on the way to CO2 neutral mobility, mm -hmm. and it's also digitization. Not just of the product becoming a smartphone on wheels and, and more or less uh, opens up a whole ecosystem next to the job it has to take you from A to B right. in style as far as Mercedes is concerned, but digitization also in terms of how we work. Mm -hmm. Many of the tools that we had, they were already there if we talk about video conferencing and, mm -hmm. and all sorts of way to, uh, ways to work digitally. Uh, before COVID-19, of course, we used these tools mm -hmm. during the, the management of this crisis. I think we have more than 500,000 video conferences in, wow. at Daimler per week. Amazing. And uh, uh, over 100,000 people are working from home. Mm -hmm. From time to time, I do it myself as well. And it works. So it's shown us these digital tools can be used in an even more powerful way. And of course, as far as decarbonization is concerned, mm -hmm. I talked about this individual mobility, freedom, but we need to turn that CO2 neutral. So stick to the plan, uh, develop uh, new technologies, continue investing. Uh, that's, my, that's my third learning from, um, uh, from this crisis so far. And that brings us to a certain initiative you have launched, Ambition 2039. Yes, Ambition 2039. About one year ago, we, uh, we announced to the world uh, our path towards CO2 neutral mobility. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, it's the whole chain you have to look at. Mm -hmm. Supply chain, your own production and operations, the product that we talked about, but also the product in use. Where does the energy actually come from? Renewable sources for the electricity for your electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. So one year in the making now. So one year ago, you launched the program. Where do you stand today, 12 months into Ambition 2039? Well, next to all the products that we're launching, we launched EQC, uh, we have turned the whole smart brand into electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. The EQV is coming this summer. We're going to show the EQA on the commercial vehicle side, electric vans, electric Vito, electric Sprinter, uh, also electric trucks, mm -hmm. buses. Across the board, we have done a product launch. But on top of that, one thing that we said last year was, uh, let's look at our own production and our own operations. And we set a target by the end of 2022 that all our passenger car plants in Europe, they should be CO2 neutral in operation. Mm -hmm. We have now widened that target to say, uh, why stick with Europe? Let's go worldwide. Mm -hmm. I had an opportunity myself at the, at the beginning of the year, uh, before COVID started, I visited our operations in Alabama and the United States where oh. we build uh, our SUVs. Mm -hmm. And the team there presented a plan to me, uh, what they can do in Europe, we can do here in Alabama as well. Mm -hmm. So now we're going for a worldwide uh, carbon neutral production by 2022. So that is very good news, Ola. Which other steps are you taking to realize Ambition 2039, this initiative of yours? Well, we're also working with our suppliers. We have challenged our suppliers mm -hmm. uh, to follow us on the road to CO2 neutral mobility. And many of them have very progressive strategies themselves. We don't have to nudge them. Mm -hmm. uh, they're doing it out of their own initiative. And some suppliers have gone like, oh, wow, uh, Mercedes is doing this. This is interesting. What does it mean for me? How can I, how can I be a part of this? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot we have focused also on uh, battery production. Mm -hmm. uh, for the new electric vehicles, uh, there is a certain amount of energy that goes into producing the battery cells. And of course, uh, it would uh, defy the purpose of an electric vehicle if you use too much CO2 
to produce what you actually need to build an electric vehicle. So for next year's EQS that we're launching, the flagship of the new EQ family, uh, we're going into CO2 neutral uh, production of battery cells with our suppliers as well. And that goes for our own battery system production also in Commons in Germany, where we have been in operation now for several years and are expanding. Although you did just mention your suppliers, what about your investors? What about green bonds and such? What do you expect from them? Many investors, so-called ESG investors today, are looking at what companies are doing uh, and only want to invest funds in companies that have a progressive agenda, that are looking at these environmental aspects and have a real game plan towards a sustainable business model. Right. So yes, we're also now uh, taking some first baby steps to going into the green bond financing market and are in preparation for that now. Uh, and that is uh, important because investment, it's going to take a lot of investment for the transformation of the auto industry and transformation of transport mm -hmm. towards CO2 neutrality. So you do have, of course, very high expectations, justifiably high expectations when it comes to your suppliers and your investors. What about your own production facilities? And uh, the engineers have really been creative about this and also looking at reducing waste. Mm -hmm. It's not just about turning the energy source to another energy source, which is renewable. That is, of course, crucially important. But it's also about reducing the amount of energy. So how much electricity or other energy do you actually use to produce something? How much water do you use? What does your waste look like in production? And how do you minimize that? How do you recycle these things? So it's, it's all coming together as a package. And a good example of that is our plant in uh, Commons, exactly. where we build our batteries. Uh, and I think uh, uh, we have a guest with us today. We uh, do. We have another special video update about the Kamenz plant from the man in charge of it. Jörg Butzer is board member for production and supply chain management. And he is prepared for us to take a first look into EQ battery production in the east of Germany. Let's have a look. Hi guys, welcome to Cummins. Today I'm extremely delighted to give you, for the first time ever, an exclusive insight in our Mercedes-Benz battery production. Cummins is the competence center for our global battery production network. It consists of nine factories in seven locations on three continents, and we are investing around one billion, a little bit more than one billion euros in this production network. This factory plays an extensive and concentrated role in our electrification offensive, where we produce in the next couple of years more than 10 EQ models and a huge variety of hybrids and mild hybrids. And producing a battery is an extremely complex production process. This line here is 170 meters long and what we are doing here, we're bringing 384 cells together and we welded together the contacts with a tolerance of only 2 micrometers. Strategically, it is very important to continue our battery production. But in these challenging times, what is even more important is the safety and the health of our employees and our colleagues here at the shop floor. Our plant management developed several measures to ensure health and safety, for example, wearing masks. And because of the dedication and the commitment of the team here, we were able in these challenging times to continue battery production. Since its foundation, we have produced half a million batteries, mild hybrids, hybrids and batteries for electric vehicles. And very soon we will surpass this number in an annual production volume. So that's it from Cummins for today. Hope to see you soon and hopefully next time personally. Take care, stay healthy. Back to you, Ola. 
Thank you, Jörg. Uh, you and the team are doing a great job in Commons and also in the other battery plants uh, around the world. Thanks. Very impressive pictures, right? I mean, is this one large step down the road towards Ambition 2039? This is a very important step. Commons is our biggest battery, op battery operation in the world right now, but we are proliferating this. We're building up battery plants. We have an operational one in China already. Mm -hmm. uh, we're building one in the United States, more also in Europe. So we're going to need more batteries. It's so important because we have this product offensive, mild hybrids, hybrids, uh, electric cars. And on top of this, uh, of course, we're opening up another plant this year, which is Great. what we call Factory 56 here at our main plant in Sindelfing and outside of Stuttgart, which will be the production facility, not only for the new S-Class, but also for its electric sibling, the EQS, that comes next year. Uh, that's our most modern high-tech factory in the world, CO2 neutral, of course, but using all the technologies for a high quality production. Exciting. Lots to come, Ola. Thank you so much for all of this insight. In fact, uh, ladies and gentlemen, in only two days from now, right here on Meet Mercedes Digital, you'll get to see not just one, but two brand new cars, the new Mercedes-Benz E-Class Coupe, and as all of us are still hoping for a very enjoyable summer, of course, the new Mercedes-Benz E-Class Cabriolet, all the same. Is that so, Ola? Yes, these are two beautiful cars. And the Coupe and Cabriolet, those are cars, you buy them to, to reward yourself. Oh. Of course, <laughs> uh, they are great for everyday use and going back and forth to the office. But as you said, on a beautiful summer day, to get mm -hmm. that roof down and just enjoy uh, the drive and, and, and taking in nature, it's gonna be uh, two great cars. And in fact, I've actually brought something with me today. Have you? Uh, yes. Uh, we're celebrating, of course, uh, more than 100 years of uh, the main interface between the driver and the car, which is the steering wheel. Right. And when our engineers and designers take on a task like that to create the new generation of a steering wheel, uh, they think through every detail. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, it needs to be beautiful. Of course. So beautiful design using high tech. So technology enables you to develop design further. And you can see this very seamless, almost like a black panel uh, design uh, with touch buttons. Everything is touch mm -hmm. and everything is in its logical position. So it must be intuitive, aesthetically pleasing, intuitive, mm -hmm. uh, also safe. So very quickly here, for instance, on the cruise control, you know what the buttons are and you know what to do. Right. Uh, so this ushers in a new era of high tech as far as steering wheels are concerned. Enjoy. And makes us look forward even more. Thank you for bringing us this very touchable teaser, Ola. And we are really looking forward to that now even more. So ladies and gentlemen, Ola, until next time, thank you for joining us. And one last thing, please do stay safe and stay healthy, everyone. Thank you once more, Ola, and see you soon. Thank you, Yasmin. Bye-bye.